Welcome to Make Your Move Mondays with Jared Richardson and Elizabeth Henry. We are excited for our very first episode of our podcast. We are. This is this is it. We're doing it. We've talked about it. We've this. made it to the big time. We've made it to the big time. This is uh, episode number one. So, so what is it? What is first on your agenda today, Jared, to, to talk about? Well, I just want to welcome everybody here to, uh, to Make Your Move Mondays. You know, kind of our idea here, we're going to take and talk about uh, properties, rural real estate, the ins, the outs, uh, you know, give tips and tricks on, on property ownership, home ownership. Uh, so really, it's kind of a broad array of things that we're going to look at, at talking about. Um, so in what our goal, we're going to do it every every other Monday, I think, when we're wanting to uh, do it. So, so Jared, starting off, tell me about some of your credentials and, and how long you've been in the real estate world. Well, me, uh, personally, I've I always kid with everyone. I tell them, I say, hey, you know, I've uh, I've been in the real estate business for 48 years. Of course, my father, uh, he's he's still active in the real estate, and he's been doing it. Close. He's been doing it 50 years. So, uh, I've certainly grew up in the business, but I've actually been a licensed uh, real estate broker uh, and been active in the real estate since 1996 is when I got my license, and so it's just just a day or two. Um, and my auction, I'm also an auctioneer, so we do auctions, uh, uh, personal property, uh, real estate auctions. And I've been, I think I've had my license, I think it was 2008. I may have to check that and see is when I become an auctioneer. Uh, of course, we've had an auction firm for 30 years, but, uh, you know, our principal auctioneer was David Keaton. And, of course, we have uh, uh, Eddie Holt works with us. He's an auctioneer. Uh, but me personally, that's they've had their, their license a lot longer than I have. So I kind of trained under those guys. And um, so, you know, we've got a long history in the real estate business, seen a lot of stuff happen. I've uh, been a part of a lot of good stuff and, and certainly interesting business. So so what about you, Elizabeth? What, what brought you into real estate? So I've been in the real estate world about a year and a half now. Uh, I enjoy it. I love uh, seeing and meeting many different people in many different places. Uh, I do m- mostly residential and land, I would say, but I even dabbled in a little bit of commercial this year, which was an interesting experience for, for a first-year agent. It, it, you know, commercial can be interesting. I know um, personally I've sold a, a couple of commercial tracks, and, and it's a different animal. Uh, it really can be, uh, especially other than, than residential or, like I say, I, I, I sell a lot of land, raw land. So, you know, like I say, it can just be a, a completely different animal. That, mm-hmm. That's certain for sure. Okay, so episode number one, one of the first things that we had uh, talked about going over um, would be winterizing your home. A lot of people forget uh, tips and tricks and things that need to be done before cold weather hits. And, and this is the time of year, you know, our first episode is going to hit, and here we are, uh, be January the 1st. So uh, at least in the part of Tennessee we're in, this is when the cold weather is really going to start hitting, uh, you know, whether it be snow or just freezing temperatures. So it's certainly something that needs to you need to take in consideration for winterizing your home, making sure everything is where it needs to be because um, one one frozen pipe can cost you a whole lot of money. Which reminds me uh, of a story. Last year I had a home under contract when that real cold weather hit, when it was three and four degrees a lot of days, and yeah, sometimes that was seven around degrees. Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah. Right around mm-hmm. Christmas, I had yeah. a home under contract that was scheduled to close the next week. And uh, the water was not left dripping inside the home, and every pipe burst. It'll do it. I, I, well, actually, the same same time period, I went to uh, Jackson, Tennessee. Um, we had to run up there real quick in a last-minute gift or just literally run straight there and back. And it's about an hour and ten minutes from here to there. Um, and so we, we wasn't gone over three hours, okay? I forgot somebody cut, well, I didn't cut it off. I left the water running, but somebody in the house cut the water off. So the time we left, went to Jackson and come back, my water had frozen in my house. Uh, fortunately, I was able to figure out where and get a heater on it and avoid any broken pipes or anything like that. But the point of that story being, it can happen real quick. Yeah. yeah. So we just have some quick tips uh, for winterizing your home, things to not forget about and the first one I have is to inspect your roof and clean out your gutters Uh, number two would be to check out snow and ice removal supplies so if you know it's going to get cold take a trip to the hardware store get you some salt just to prepare for that 
check your dryer vents to prevent fires and have your fireplace and chimney checked. I know a lot of people around here have fireplaces, wood burning stoves in their house. And that's that's very good to have that checked because a lot of times um, uh, when you if you don't if you have a flue and you have a lining inside a clay lining and sometimes that can bust and if you're not careful if it has a wide enough crack and you've built a fire. Well, that allows a place for um, uh, debris to build up, to catch on fire, or crystal to build up and to start burning, or to get embers inside, you know, uh, places they shouldn't be. So that's very important to have your chimney checked. I know uh, my daughter just have hers checked out before they started using it. Uh, so it's very good to know uh, to hire a professional that does that for a living. Another another thing that we forget about sometimes, I've noticed it at my house, at the bottom of our doors and windows, you have to be careful for a breeze sometimes. So we uh, sometimes wrap up towels if we don't have something heavier to prevent air and, and yes. breeze from coming in. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, I, I remember my grandparents always doing that. They would always take and, and put a towel or put something there, and, and it really it can really make a big difference. A lot of times I think people forget, too, about their outside faucets, even if they're not running. Sometimes it's it's best just to go ahead and get those covered. It, it really is. And, well, actually, my problem that I had was an outside faucet. It wasn't the one that goes in the side of your house, but it was the frost-free. And what it done, it was so cold that they, it actually froze down that pipe and froze my water because that pipe mm-hmm. got so cold. Um, but, anyway, that's kind of... So lots of neat things to remember with with cold weather coming. We haven't hit it just yet, I don't think, but I think it's coming. Uh, it, it is. It's coming. So, you know, you want to make sure, like, uh, sometimes if you you have an exposed water pipe or a water pipe that comes up out of the ground and goes into your house, your mobile home, whatever it may be, I personally have some, uh, some mobile homes that I use heat tape on, and uh, that way it'll, it'll stay good and warm. Even with the insulation, it can freeze. So, you know, that's something that you want to consider, too, putting heat tape on it. If you're going to be gone for a long time, uh, let's say you're going to have to be gone for two or three days, it's always good to cut the water off, uh, to cut your water off, that is, and and make sure because if a pipe busts in the house and no one's home and it stays on for two or three days, it can certainly create a mess. And Let's see, uh, you know, you can put space heaters in your well. Uh, of course, you need a heat lamp. Most people use heat lamps, uh, but you need to check them, make sure the lights are on, because sometimes those heat lamps, at least a little vibration can bust them. You know, they'll shoot. Uh, so there's a lot of different tricks and tips that you can do uh, to make sure that your, your pipes don't freeze and, and different things. My favorite is just leave the water running just a just little leave, bit. Yeah, just a drip. Mm-hmm. As long as that water's moving, it should be all right. It's always aggravating whenever your your water freezes and you can't take a shower because once them water lines freeze, you, there's nothing you can do about it until they thaw out. And uh, so, you know, something, uh, I know you have a lot of livestock, you have a lot of horses, cattle. Um, so what what's some, some I, what can you do at your barns? And, you know, because if you have a barn and you have water at the barn and you have animals, you need to take care of those in the cold weather too. So what are some things that people can can do to help their their horses or livestock so a little bit about livestock specifically horses one thing that we do is blanket our horses in the winter when it's real cold like this uh, just mainly at at night sometimes it drops to real low temperatures and we try to keep them in the barn uh, out of the wind and stuff at night Uh, we put them up every night mainly for cattle uh, you just want to make sure that they have a good wind break so if it comes a real good snowstorm or or wind, you want to make sure that they've got a wind break, whether that be a line of trees or, or the side shed or anything like that. That's always helpful. Uh, I always try to remember, we water our horses at night in their stalls, I always try to remember to uh, drain the water hose because sometimes we've had a lot of busted water hose over the past few winters because we forget to drain the water hose. Well, that, that makes sense, you know, because I've done that. I've left the, the thing on the water hose, and you go out there the next day, and the whole thing froze, and it breaks and cracks and everything else talking about the farm and different things you do for your livestock um if you had an ag card you know that expires or expired uh, december 31st so you need to make sure that you've had all that renewed and uh i know that i got mine uh, renewed this year again so you know don't don't forget about that 
here we are we're in 2024 uh, we're getting in the real estate market uh, of course this time of year depending on weather will kind of dictate on how busy we are uh, if we had a lot of rain a lot of uh, uh, cold weather it'll, it'll typically slow things down but if it's pretty weather it will stay just as busy when it's 20 degrees as if it's uh, 90 degrees uh, so you know you need to uh, be prepared to if you have your house on the market you know uh, people are still looking no matter what time of year it is and of course our uh, uh, 2024 market is is looking up i mean we've had a great 2023 uh, really for the rural area like we are uh, you know we still have a lot of people moving here because with the availability of the high speed internet in our county which has been a huge game changer for us because uh, over the years, I, I, you just would be amazed at how many sales that I've lost because there was not high-speed internet that was available. And, uh, of course, our area here, we have a couple different providers now. And, like I say, it's just made a huge difference because so many people have started working from home. Yes. Uh, now you can move out of the cities and you can come to this area and have good internet to be able to work and to do your meetings. And, and uh, so it's, it's just worked really well and, and benefited this this area like we are people love love the small town feel that we have here and in the surrounding counties too but perry county is just a special place to be and people are seeing that no oh, it, it is and uh, of course you know we work perry lewis decatur counties uh, well i mean we've sold property all over the state of tennessee and we can sell anywhere in the state as far as that goes um, so we're not just limited to, to Perry County, but it is kind of our home base and, and where we live at. Um, so it's certainly a uh, uh, beautiful area, and just this whole Middle Tennessee region, this area here with the, the hills, of course a lot of folks call us mountains, and of course we're not mountain, we're just hills to us, you know. So we're a hilly topography, uh, we have a lot of forest land, uh, we have a lot of water. We have the Tennessee River, the Buffalo River. You have the Duck River. Uh, runs through Hickman County. and um, So many creeks. So, so many different creeks. And it's just a, a beautiful area to be. And so many people are starting to see that now. And with the availability to work from home and to work and live here has just really opened the doors up for people. And uh, we've uh, been able to meet a lot of fantastic people in this business the last few years. Of course, here again this time of year, we were talking about the uh, the weather, how it kind of can affect the market and, and what's going on. Uh, but really, you know, overall, I think across the state, our inventory is still low. Uh, and, of course, when you have your low inventory, that allows prices to remain stable or to uh, uh, continue to rise. Uh, of course, historically, uh, real estate goes up every year. And especially when you get into a shortage like we've been in and, and we still have low inventory right now. So that means higher prices for your sellers. Okay, so let me ask you a question, Jared. A lot of times we hear, I'm going to wait till the market crashes or I'm going to wait till prices go back down. I'm going to wait till interest rates are really low. What is your advice for somebody waiting on the perfect time to buy or sell? Well, you know, is there ever really a perfect time? Because sometimes you find yourself in a situation that you have to sell or that you need to sell um, and so you know as far as when when's the perfect time to buy a home well whenever you can afford the home you know and and I, I don't mean that as a slur in any way but you need to take a look at your finances because you want to own your home and not your home own you right. and so there's a lot of you know you can talk with with uh, your lenders and different things on what your down payment needs to be uh, you know how much taxes insurance and things like that are uh, but as far as wait until the market crashes or interest rates go down well the interest rates have went down um, some and then they expect them to go down some more this year hopefully uh, but waiting on the market to crash well you're going to be waiting a while cause and you may just miss out on your perfect home you, you, too you may miss out on it because everybody now, now i'm speaking from personal experience because i was in the real estate business full-time in 2007, 8, and 9, whenever the, the market crashed. And uh, the setup and scenario that we have now is absolutely nothing like it then because you had so much subprime lending, people borrowing 110, 15% when they're buying a house. I would go to closings and people would get a, I mean, the buyers would get as big or bigger checks than the sellers at times. 
And uh, so, you know, it's not the same scenario, same setup. Now, will the market slow down? Will it have a little bump in the road? Well, yes, it always does. It always will. Um, but like I say, it's not something that you just want to sit back and wait. Because if you find the house that you want, go ahead and buy it. If the interest rates drop back down to 3 and 4%, refinance it. It's just as simple as that. Um, I like that advice, especially as somebody that's young. We, we, we have our own home now, and, and young people sometimes tend to hesitate, but I think if you in, invest in a nice property that you like when you're a little bit younger, sometimes it pays off in the end to be able to be where you want to be. Oh, oh absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it, uh, uh, like I say, don't be afraid to purchase a home because the interest rates are 7%, 8%. Um, you know, my, my first home loan was almost 8%, but going back to my father, you know, like I say, he's been active in real estate 50 years. He was paying 18 and 19% on loans uh, back in the wow. 80s. So if you could imagine borrowing money at almost 20%, and, um, man, that just seems... That's crazy. That's crazy. It's, it's unreal to us because we've been so spoiled for the last few years or last several years on the, the low interest rates. So really, compared to that, we have low interest rates right now. Uh, we do. I mean, I mean, seven or eight percent is still cheap on your money. I mean, six or seven percent, I think, allows you for a good, healthy real estate, and and you know that, that's okay. Uh, you know, I think this morning on the radio we mentioned that uh, I had a gentleman tell me that uh, that they were going to get eleven percent, but it was a different. I think it was on a track of land, and of course, really, some of your interest rates are based on your credit rating as well. Right. In conclusion to your question, the right time to move is now. You know, if you're looking to make your move, don't wait. If you can find the house that, that you want, you can always refinance later. And, you know, don't don't wait for it because you'll miss out on more than than you realize. Right. And um, so definitely don't, don't wait around for things to... For the, don't wait around for the market to collapse again because I, I personally don't think it's going to. Uh, the real estate market's not going to. Um, you know, and, and my theory has always been even if it does, we're all in it together. Right. So, you know, we'll get through it one way or the other. So a neat thing that I think is important for us to mention is that we're here in Perry County and we're local. We know the market. We know the trends and, and the downfalls and the ups of the market that goes on here in Perry County and Lewis, Decatur, Humphreys, all the surrounding counties. I think it's important for people to know that we're here and, and know how good of a job that we do for our clients. No, that, that's absolutely right. You know, we are local. We know the area. We know the people. We know, um, uh, like I say, the nuances of the business. Uh, and here again, you know, don't limit uh, just think well you're from Linden you can't sell it because I mean here again they you know, sold property all the way in Mount Julian on the other side of Nashville went to Cookville sold property on a thousand acre track so I mean we we can definitely get out there and reach a lot of people and and you know here again like I say our base is in Linden but we certainly reach out we have a whole lot wider footprint than that. And I think sometimes people think small town small town real estate office that we don't handle big properties and that's just not the case at all. Well, you know, that's true. That's a very good point, Elizabeth. You know, a lot of times uh, people think, well, you're just, oh, you're, you're in Linden. You're just a little office. Uh, and, uh, you know, they don't realize that we sell property. Yes, I've sold many a lot for, I've sold some lots for $1,000, but I've also sold multi-million dollar properties. We put uh, just as much work into either one. And we'll put just as much work into them. That's right. And um, so here again, we have the belt just to handle whatever size sell it is. And, you know, certainly uh, would love to love to talk with people and look at property and be out on it and give you your ideas. And, you know, that's that's just that's what we do. I mean, that's the way we make our living. We're in this every day. We're in the trenches. We're not part time, um, you know, just where we're in and out of the market when it's good and not in it when it's bad. We're here every day for you. And we're people people. So we like people to stop in our office. We've got a warm body in our office all the time. You can always get an answer on the phone. So stop by and see us sometime. Yeah, if you have absolutely. any real estate needs. That's right. Anything else, Jared? No, ma'am. I, I guess that's it. That's all I can think of today. If you need anything else, give us a call at 931-589-2455. We're here for you. you check out our website at richardsonresales.com. That's it for Make Your Move Monday. See you next time.